Yeah, and be more news than the public. I am proud to be a product of this city's public schools. Public schools in the District of Columbia. Washington needs more events in Britain. And yes, I listened very carefully to my dear brother and friend, Harry Thomas Jr., when he talked about the fact that there are three Wilson High School graduates on this council, and that is true. And I remember the day he said to me, we have three Wilson graduates. You're always talking about Dunbar High School. What do you think of that? And my answer was, obviously, Tommy, my dear friend, it takes three Wilsons to equal one Dunbar. <laughs> I'm also proud to be a graduate of George Washington University. I am proud to have been the first African American in a fraternity at George Washington University. And proud, proud to have been joined today, all these years later, by more than 20 of the brothers of Ta Epsilon Phi. All of us have been bonded. having been bonded by what truly was then and remains a profound human experience. I also stand here proud to have been able to serve people with disabilities and the children, youth, and families of this city. I'm proud to have enjoyed the support of the people of Ward 7 as their council member for two years, and then the people across this city who were kind enough to elect me to be the chairman of the Council of the District of Columbia for the past four years. And yes, I am proud, just a few weeks ago, to have been elected to be the next mayor of the District of Columbia. Thank you, District of Columbia. And on behalf of the people of our city, I want to thank our outgoing mayor, Adrian Fenton, who has been a devoted and dedicated public servant in the District of Columbia. Please join me and thank you, Mayor Fenton. public service in the District of Columbia because he too is a native Washingtonian. Thank you, Adrian. Since the inception of Home Rule, five people before me have raised their hand and taken this sacred oath. Each has left a unique mark on the office. They served in times of prosperity as our city flourished, and they served in times of challenge and hardship but all have benefited mightily from the strength and optimism of the people of the District of Columbia. We live in one of the most unique and recognizable cities on earth. Across the world, people hear Washington, D.C., and they conjure images of majesty and history. They think of the home of our president, the seat of our national government, a command center in the global struggle for freedom and democracy. While we take pride in these images and honor the special relationship we share with the federal government, to us, the people of the District of Columbia, this city means something quite different. To us, quite frankly, it is home. It is, it is where we work, raise our families, build communities, practice our faith, teach our children, and yes, every day live our lives. And while there are some 
who choose to focus on the racial or economic differences in the city, make no mistake. There is far more that brings us together than there is that drives us apart. Whether, whether we live in Northeast, Northwest, North, Southeast, or Southwest, whether we are black, white, red, brown, or yellow, whether we get around by car, bus, train, foot, or bike, this is one city, our city, the District of Columbia. We have our share of challenges that are unique to our city. In many ways, Washington is the greatest symbol of our nation's democracy. Yet, we as Washingtonians continue to be the only people in our nation that remain shut out of that democracy. In our system of government, presidents change and control of Congress swings like a pendulum. There's at least one constant. We, the residents of this city, remain here from one administration to the next and one Congress to the next. That is why we cannot rest until we achieve true self-determination. And yes, become our nation's 51st state in the United States of America. While we must remain diligent in that quest, we also appreciate the special and beneficial, I might say, relationship that we share with the federal government. That is why my administration is looking forward to working closely with the White House and the federal agencies to achieve progress for our city. Whether it's creating jobs, improving education, or strengthening our government, President Obama and my administration share many of the same goals, and we plan work to work closely to achieve them. I truly appreciated the opportunity to discuss our priorities with President Obama at our lunch at the White House on December 1st. And I'm encouraged by the assurance of regular, meaningful engagement I have received from the President's Cabinet and his staff. Quite simply, I know we can accomplish great things to make our city best nation's capital in the world. <laughs>